speaking of Trump, there was an interesting uh, press conference. There was an interesting rally this weekend. It's kind of a tale of two moments right now in Canada and in uh, in Trump world. President Trump has basically said he's running in 2024, right? I mean, he's lining up support now. So he gave this big rally uh, with Governor Greg Abbott. Where was the location of this rally? By it the was way? in Texas. I Texas, thought. yeah. Was it Texas? I guess it well, was I Texas. Well, I figured that that's why he was there. So, yeah, Governor Greg Abbott of Texas shows up. Um, there were a couple of big kind of moments in this speech, I think, that were pretty telling. I guess first we should talk about the January 6th riot specifically. And if you want to con- kind of compare what was going on in Canada to why Justin Trudeau left at that time. He left, I guess, because of concern that this was going to be Canada's January 6th moment, right? So security, et cetera. So he leaves, right? He flees and does what he does. And then in the United States, President Trump said this about uh, about the January 6th protesters and what he would do if he were president again in 2024. And another thing we'll do, and so many people have been asking me about it, if I run and if I win, we will treat those people from January 6th fairly. We will treat them fairly. And if it requires pardons, we will give them pardons because they are being treated so unfairly. This hasn't happened to all of the other atrocities that took place recently. Nothing like this has happened. What that unselect committee is doing and what the people are doing that are running those prisons, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. Okay, so let's unpack that a little bit. First of all, it's the select committee. I don't know if he was just being funny there, the unselect committee, but the select committee on yes. January 6th. And so going after these people specifically, yes, it's like one of the largest manhunts in American history, Going looking for these hundreds of people that went into the Capitol specifically. Okay. So he, he might be right on that front. But, you know, last week, of course, we saw, we now know, like on the Proud Boys uh, guys, the, the, the guys that were arrested, um, and they found they had gone to the lo- like local hotel with a huge barrage of weapons, like huge stores of weapons. Yes. Like in, they carted in like baskets of weapons, like as a fallback, like ready to use these weapons uh, in order to to do whatever they were going to do. Um, and it w- had been organized. Like we know from this Proud Boys thing that they had been organized for weeks ahead mm-hmm. of time. Uh, so that specifically, like if you're just going to like take the, the random guy that gets caught up in the melee and now is like going to be in prison for 15 years or something, compare that to like what's going on with the Proud Boys. You can't just generalize about everyone who was there that day. Okay, but my response to that like is, oh, we're going to start talking about who gets treated fairly in a court of law. Then I think we start with race, not necessarily January 6th, if that's where we're going. Wouldn't you say? Like th- this is this class, is class race class race yes yes okay I, mean, if you, if I don't you... think this is where you start and I think you know I read the book Where Law Ends by Andrew Weissman who was one of the lead investigators on the Mueller report and one of the things they were specifically looking at was did Trump dangle pardons in front of people and use that unfairly right or or illegally right to dangle pardons to discourage participation from so the pardon is not supposed to be something you use as a bribe or to your own political advantage and he's doing it again and i i just i feel like this is very gray area to say i would do this or then even do it i mean he could say he could do it right obviously because on the campaign trail you they all say they'll pardon so and so who's popular to be pardoned in the but at the same time, I just feel very uncomfortable with the idea of this for that. Um, I just, I don't, I mean, I don't think it's right. And I think he should know better because he was investigated for his use of pardons. So this is the kind of thing, like, if if there's an argument to be made that he was trying to overthrow the Biden presidency and he is actually now using pardons to that same end Right. Right. Like it's I, I'm very unclear if this is even allowed. And it seems like he doesn't care. Like he always gets. In no, this, he, like, he does in this the to, like and... it's a media. You know, he knows he's going to make media headlines. Right. With this, and that's exactly what he did. And, and look, yes. So should, does that mean you do not care about the rule of law? Like if someone did break the law, broke in, uh, you know, stole stuff from members of Congress, uh, 
punched a police officer, shouldn't shouldn't we go through a court process and like find out what yes. what the heck happened here? Yeah. Right? They get a slap on the wrist. Maybe they you know they have to serve community service or whatever it ends up being. And then like hey, the Proud Boys guys that had cartons of weapons. Yeah. And they were planning for weeks and they had this whole organized thing going on. Maybe maybe a different bucket than the person who gets swept up in this. But I agree with you, this idea that you're going to use this now as a cudgel. Like this is the thing you're gonna use the pardons. You're also gonna use the you're gonna have Mike Pence try to go in and try to, you know, not certify the election results and fight. Yes. So yeah, it's 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 um I don't think it would I just think it it's not a real campaign promise. It's just a I don't know. I do think he would try, um, but I don't think any of us as voters should put it on our list of reasons to vote for Trump. Is what I'm saying. Okay. Maybe you want to. <laughs> no, no. I mean, but <laughs> if hey, you're let, keeping no, a list. Let me let me play devil's advocate here. If he said, "Hey, you know what? Uh, for some reason, Edward Snowden. I should have pardoned him when I had the chance, and I just, I, I, I didn't. I don't know why. I had something going on that night. I couldn't do it. You know, I had a dinner party, and I couldn't get to it." Yeah. Julian Assange. Like, I, I, I couldn't get to yeah. it. I couldn't do it. I had something going on that night. Elect me in 2024 because I am going to pardon Julian Assange. I'm going to pardon Ed Snowden. Would that be something that, I mean, for a lot of people, they would say, yeah, you absolutely. I'll get on board just for that alone to stand up for journalism, for journalistic freedoms and freedom yeah. of speech. Sure. I would. Yeah. Yeah. I would feel differently about it. Sure. Um, but I think that that is more legal. This January 6th idea is just a bit too hairy right now while it is still in the courts. I don't know. I, I, I tend to agree because I think that, you know, like like we saw that guy that was actually there telling people to go inside, telling people to do this stuff, and he's removed from all lists, nothing happening. So, you know, there's sinister stuff amiss just from that stuff alone. So there's a lot of stuff that we don't know. Um, and so I don't think that these people should be the fall people for what could have been, you know, we don't know how many feds were involved. We don't know how much they were helping organize with these people. And then now they're the fall guys for, you know, that happening. So I, I don't, I don't agree that this should, there should have been a committee. We should have just moved on because we're like, again, for us to think for one second that a bunch of Trump supporters, uh, were able to get into the capital of the United States. I mean, that's like the same, what if there was a bunch of Saudis that were there that did it? Like they could I mean, have just walked in, like they were being let in. So I committee just committee schmitty. That's I mean congressional committees. They're just for well, no, I know, but it's relations. But, but, but all I'm saying is that's what's people, making this. Don't you think that anyone who like, like who actually didn't know that you you cannot go into the Capitol and like why it's our into, building, it's our building. Um, we, but we you cannot I mean, go past federal security. That's well, just, but there's I mean, but that's happened before. There's been sit-ins. Uh, there were sit-ins with handicapped people in Nancy Pelosi's office. You know, I, like it's happened. And they were code arrested. pink. Code pink did yes, it. Yeah, but, but they weren't. But it wasn't like this. Law enforcement is is not legal, right? And so you're right. There was law enforcement there that was sending mixed messages. Each one of them, I think, should have their own court of law. Like should have their day in court, and a jury of their peers should decide whether they did right or wrong um i don't i'm a, i'm with you i don't i don't care at all to see Congress right but imprisoning these people the bottom of anything right exactly because they never do and to imprison these right. people you know what i'm saying like we don't know the circumstances we don't know how they were let in there's too many things that are unknown and and again we're never going to know the answers to this why were people handing out sticks from the basement why why were people trying to pull down people breaking windows? We don't see all of that stuff. Where the like, why aren't they heroes? But the you know, and these people are getting fifteen years. Like you know, it, it just to me, it's just like it's the 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 um punishment doesn't uh, equal yeah. the crime or whatever. Right, but well, we you got... should not pardon somebody that has anything to do with you, right? Like that should be pretty easy. That's usually not how that works. Yeah. Um, but Trump is fine doing that. Um, and I think that's that's the hairier part of it. But how does I, that's what again, I don't understand how it's all being like there's a lot of people still that think he called for that and he he didn't. If you read his tweets, you know, it's yeah. just like if you if you listen to well, Martin Luther that's King parsing Jr. words, and I think that you're you're heading down the Spotify conversation, which we absolutely should have. So Richard wants to know, Natalie, do you really think the January sixth committee is a PR stunt? Yes, I do. 
What, because it, it, when we've seen these things happen before, when c Congress somehow gets to the bottom of it and then hands their reports over to any law enforcement and the Justice Department and the FBI can decide or not decide whether to take up certain investigations. We saw that happen with Kavanaugh. Um, I absolutely do think that these like congressional committees are just dog and pony shows. And well, we be, applaud I, you for know them. what I would really love to know from a historical perspective is like what involvement Trump had in these in these text messages like when when the National Guard could have been called in to secure the Capitol like why was that denied why were these things that that's the stuff that's really interesting to me and I don't know that we would get to the bottom of that w without having a select committee so maybe that's one thing I would want out of that because the FBI doesn't seem like they're but interested that, in answering that question they're but in we going know. after these individual people. I know, but we know these select committees, they like they were supposed to get to the bottom of 9-11 and we know more, no more than we did the day that they created that committee. And it was all supposed to get us answers, but they never do. And anytime they get anything, because they're both si same side of the same coin or whatever, or different side yeah. of the same coin, they well, both I, want I the same back, outcome. I, I go back to the Warren Commission. You know, the reason we, we have all of the information about the JFK assassination is thanks to the Warren Commission. So we get a lot, I think, from these select committees. But they don't have the power I'm joking, to. By the way. I'm yeah, no, I know because they got us nothing. <laughs> they, got, they, they got us nothing. In fact, they got us the opposite, which is which they they planted CIA members of the CIA inside of the Warren Commission. So well, again, and, and tell me a commission that's been created that has given us what we wanted. Like, give me one that has had the outcome where we actually got the information. It wasn't redacted. It wasn't a, a matter of security because that's like any any question you would ask. It's a matter of security. We can't we can't tell you that part. It's all been redacted. These people come in and they testify not under oath, although the yeah. people that were in charge are got to be under oath. They got to tell the truth. So it's just it's just a dog and pony show to me. Well, yes, remember, we, we had the, er, uh, the Erskine Bowles um, Commission, right? We had the Erskine Bowles Commission and we got recommendations on the Erskine Bowles. Uh, what was it? What was I remember? Uh, do you guys remember this? It was. We, we, we put them in charge for like a year or so to figure out and give us answers and uh, on... for a federal budget, I believe. I oh. think it was specifically on that. And then when we got it, we ignored all of it. <laughs> like they gave a like here were all of the things and Republicans and Democrats chose them to give us answers to put go through this whole process. And then once they when they handed over their report, we pretty much ignored them. Right. Because I think most people don't rem remember that the legislative branch is not the judicial branch, right? So, but Congress people act like they are. They are not. AOC cannot arrest you. Neither can, you know, and neither can Rand Paul. Neither can Governor Abbott. Like, they, these are elected officials made to make laws, not to punish, right? So they pretend that they have the right to like, oh, we're really gonna get to the bottom of this and then we'll, re we'll recommend to the Justice Department. The Justice Department should already be separately getting to the bottom of it. They Sp should already be doing that. And in fact, they do in a lot of places. They get to the bottom of things that they then selectively decide to either take up or not take up. Um, I really do recommend the book Where Law Ends if you wanna, about inside the Mueller investigation because I think they had some hard calls there and in my opinion, they made the right calls, even though the media and uh, Bill Barr kind of spun it their way. There was some things there, some trails to follow. And the reason they never actually picked up on a lot of strings was because they knew that the president could not have his day in court. And you cannot impugn somebody who will not have their day in court, even by naming them in some kind of uh, judicial filing or law lawsuit filing. Um, yeah. And so I do think that the Justice Department does do their own work. The media is sort of right now calling out Merrick Garland saying, you're not arresting enough people around, you know, the January 6th riot is kind of you see where the media bent is. But it does seem to be that he's making choices that are informed choices.
So uh, Erskine Bowles and Alan Simpson. I mean, it was the Simpson oh. Bowles Commission under President Obama, of course, famously, uh, and it was on re- fiscal responsibility and reform and they <laughs> on budget deficit reduction, et cetera. So then it was Republican Democrat. They came back with this commission report, and basically Democrats and Republicans basically ignored it. So that's what we get for these for these commissions. But hey, there was also more news out of this Trump uh, Trump rally, including Governor Greg Abbott who was there from Texas. Um, he was announced, and uh, quite a big, uh, uh, quite a lot of booing went on. Here is the announcement of Governor Greg Abbott to this crowd of MAGA supporters. And please, please welcome, welcome the, governor the governor of the, of the great, great state, state of Texas. Texas. calling him a, a Republican in name only. And of course, a lot of the criticism about lockdowns and and, uh, and things, uh, you know, obviously what he did, closing churches and other things in Texas um, were, is, you know, one of the main reasons he was uh, booed quite loudly here. But then I guess one way that he could actually come out and show, get the crowd riled up again uh, was to just randomly start yelling Donald Trump's name. <laughs> like, he's just, like, he's like, okay, People don't want to hear me, so I'm just going to start yelling Donald Trump's name over and over and over again. And the crowd was like, okay, now we can get behind you I on mean, that. it's not a terrible idea if you're being booed to just chant. Are you ready for Donald J. Trump? <laughs> Donald J. Trump is ready for you. <laughs> Donald J. Trump loves the great state of Texas. And Texans love President Donald J. Trump. He is getting ready to come out here, and he wants to see you show your support for our President Donald J. Trump. Now, Donald J. Trump, he also... (laughs) Got to keep putting that J in there, too. So, hey, everyone's booing me. Now, Clayton P. Morris, he has more to say. Clayton P. Morris. So they don't like him. Why? Um, Some say it's because he closed down churches during the pandemic. Um, I don't think it has to do with his controversial abortion ban law. Uh, There's just, I I did not realize, I thought that he was a champion of the Texas Republican Party. I didn't realize there would be some. Champion of it? Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of people support his, I thought, He's one of their champions. Oh, one of uh, well, and that was a okay. that was a video from a phone in a small section. So you know that couldn't have, couldn't have, like could have been just a small section. It didn't necessarily mean it was like the whole stadium. Right. Yeah. I mean, he has done what they asked when it comes to voting rights legislation. When it comes to abortion laws, he's a pioneer now in um, anti-abortion legislation. So, if is it just they don't like the churches, like that there was some churches shut down during? COVID? I don't know. Is this surprising to you? Because I, I did think that uh, Republicans very much like Governor Greg Abbott, although um, he is facing re-election and they're saying now, well, this may not be a shoe in Snarky for Life says, oh, it makes me feel sick that people still refer to Trump as the president. Yeah, yeah, he's well, not I mean, the president, guys. I mean, he is technically. You're always once once president. You're always you always get that label. So you know, we still President Jimmy Carter, President Barack Obama, President Bill Clinton. So you still refer to him that way, regardless of whether or not they're currently in office or not. You don't say former president. Okay. You know, th- that's just what you how you announce and introduce people. Just yeah. the same as uh, you know, if someone is a former senator. Yeah. You say senator, you still refer to them as a senator. Or Mr. Speaker, the Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, I've interviewed hundreds of times. And, you know, every time I interviewed him, he wasn't Speaker anymore. You'd say oh, Mr. Speaker. That's yeah, yeah people still call me Captain. So, <laughs> Right. <laughs> Captain Obvious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see. They were excited, though, about... Uh, they, they were excited about um, President Trump coming out to speak. Um, and uh, who else were they excited about yesterday at this rally? They were excited about um, uh, uh, Donald Trump Jr. They were excited about him. That's Donald good. Trump Jr. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So uh, uh, they were excited about Colonel Allen West, who's running against Abbott. It looks like so Allen West could be the uh, 
he he's probably in, in greater favor with Trump Trump supporters than uh, I than feel like the guy. Trumps and Clintons should buy Epstein Island and move there and just go away out of the public eye. No, we need Donald Jim, Trump Jr. Man, I, I I hope I hope I just you know the wanting to watch this dog and pony show in me hopes that like Donald Jr. That Trump. is, but that's see, that's wrong, Clayton. Is that's it? wrong for us as part of the media to have that personal agenda. We were talking about this this morning because I was reading a book about... Um, I'm wrong. Here we go again. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. I am unlikable. But I was reading a book about called Scaffolding Parenting. It is a parenting book that talked about how when you seek out things that feed into your conviction bias, you get a dopamine hit that is like pleasurable, right? So those of us who are like looking for news that reinforces our worldview, we get literally addicted to it and the news media plays on that in order to get you addicted. So Clayton and I were having this discussion because we're like, we could play into that too to get more viewers, but that's wrong. It would be wrong of us to do that. What's more responsible of us is to be willing to take on news that does not feed into our conviction bias, but will that mean that all of our viewers are like, oh, this hurts. Like what's the opposite of dopamine, right? Well, I mean, we talk about about on the show, like the show, you know, that's the theme of our show is right. Let's get uncomfortable, right? This show, I mean, the idea here is that we're going to cover topics in the mainstream media that the mainstream media will not cover, or at least give you a viewpoint. We hope that maybe the mainstream media ignores, uh, right? And it's going to, and it may be uncomfortable, you know. And so, for selfish reasons, sure, it'd be awesome to have another Trump presidency because he says says crazy things. He's very divisive, and he says things that will feed into our conviction bias that we could just play all the time, right? Like. Um, but that's not right for you. And it's certainly not, I don't think a good use of our voice. Um, but it's interesting then to think about what you're reading online or what you're watching or what you think when you're like, Ooh, that I already thought that let me click it. Right. And then you're like, ah, this well, what about this? Maybe, hit. maybe this would unite America. Um, Ted Cruz oh, is interested please, in no. running for president of the United States. So that's the big question. Can he No, notice he wasn't there at this big Trump rally. We, we well, already saw telling. that he can't. Like, we saw him get destroyed by Trump. He got, you know, that's the thing. He got destroyed by Trump. And Trump called his wife ugly. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and then he, like, such a sycophant, like, supports him afterwards. Well, know? didn't he say something about his dad and, this, like, the Kennedy thing oh, or yeah, something? Like, like, he, like, it was involved in the Kennedy assassination, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I, I mean, we would have him on the air interviewing Ted, Ted Cruz, and he would just slam President Trump for his lies and his mendacity. And then he comes around and, like, supports him like a little sycophant kissing his feet, you know? Yeah. So. I mean, we'll take it, right? Because we'll have to then parse out what these major po politicians say. Yeah. Um, but in but reference to what you were saying, Natalie, about, you know, not wanting, like, not saying things like that. But the thing is, we're, we're only ever given two choices anyway. So it's like you might as well have a good battle because it's not like we're going to get anybody good anybody anyway that's for the people. Like for me personally, I vote with principle. I don't vote against somebody. I vote for somebody. And I have not had anybody that I could vote for that's been in a position. So I don't. I just don't vote, you know? Yeah. And, not and even I feel an like, American Idol? Um, no, not even an American Idol. Like yeah, I, 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 mean, I never voted in that, even though I always call the winner. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, t um. Hope Platt uh, in the chat says, Natalie, you are not unlikable. You are honest. I respect that in a person. Keep doing what you do. You right. should spend yes. some time one on one with yeah. me. <laughs> Hope, you want to go on a, go on a weekend trip with her? <laughs> Tell me if you say the same thing. No, I love my wife. Stop it.